got the moves, I got the ways to get to you. You want trouble, you'll be sorry if you mess with this body. I got the body. The body rules. I got the body. Diciamo che ho sempre detto, eh, come chi fa le strisce per i fumetti? Ah! Eh, il cinema è un, è un diversivo, quindi bisogna farlo con quello spirito lì. One of my favorite aspects of exploitation has always been remake exploitation, especially when it comes to the Italian stuff. Exploitation filmmakers like Bruno Mattai had a real knack for taking like three different films and mashing them together into one insanely entertaining knockoff that, at times, can actually feel really unique. Strike Commando and Robo War are a little more blatant than some of the others in that Strike Commando is basically Rambo 2 and Robo War is Predator. But dude, it's Reb Brown. You're still gonna enjoy the shit out of it. Bruno's best knockoff cinema flicks, in my opinion, are Terminator 2, which in actuality is the Megaforce versus Aliens, with a little bit of Terminator thrown in. Excellent. Hell of the Living Dead, which is kind of played as an idea of what's going on during Dawn of the Dead in terms of explaining what's actually causing the zombie apocalypse and a special forces team caught in the middle of it. Cool as shit. And of course, the film being spotlighted in today's episode, the awesome Rats Night of Terror. Rats Night of Terror is a post-apocalyptic horror film about a group of outlanders trapped in an abandoned city by mutated super-intelligent rats. When the world crumbled after the nuclear holocaust of 2015, what was left of humanity fled to the underground, forming the second human race in the era after the bomb. A century later, a handful of people dissatisfied with life in the sewers took to the surface, seeking to truly reclaim Earth in the year 225 after the bomb. A question that might be on your minds. How is this a horror film, and what film other than Mad Max could this possibly be ripping off? Well, would you believe me that it has a similar plot structure to Night of the Living Dead? The characters end up having to board themselves into a building to avoid being eaten alive by rats. This is essentially the exact same thing that happens in Night of the Living Dead, only with zombies. But there's more. The wannabe leader gets cocksure and wants to take control of the group, making shit worse. This is just like the power struggle between Ben and Harry. And like Night of the Living Dead, a member of the group gets sick from being bitten. Instead of by a zombie, in this case, it's a plague-ridden nuclear holocaust rat. Also, Bruno himself states that it was inspired by Night of the Living Dead in the special features on the DVD. Can't really argue with that. So yeah, it's a post-apocalyptic action layout with horror and creature feature elements. A prime example of how creative Bruno Mattai was as a filmmaker, and why I respect the hell out of his work as much as I do. This is also among some of his nicer and more professional looking films, though actually having a decent DVD release probably owes to that. Off the top of my head, other than this, his best looking films are Women's Prison Massacre, The Other Hell, and SS Girls. A post-nuclear horror film in the same bag as Nazi, Nun, and women in prison exploitation. One of these things is not like the other. And by nicer and more professional, I obviously mean paying attention to creating a cool lighting setup, interesting locations, awesome character wardrobe, and some inventive set design. This is obviously a reused set from some other Mad Max knockoff, but it's used and shot well, especially in the night shots you get a genuine sense of it being this desolate shell of a town. The characters are all incredibly unique, in personality and in appearance. With an ensemble cast, that's something you absolutely need to make work. Each character needs to have their own quirks and idiosyncrasies, and Rats nails this. The group is comprised of 11 characters, each of which help to add to the film's pace. There's Video, a self-proclaimed technology genius and video game expert. 
By complete accident, he gets the power going in the building they've decided to make their home for the time being. He plays off of Chocolate, the resident bad dudette of the group. They're the film's unlikely pair-up of the brute and the jester. Video has the hot something fierce for Chocolate, but she isn't going to give him any that easy. And yeah, I realize how anti-PC her name is, but get over it. She's an awesome character. Taurus is the resident bad dude. This motherfucker is badass to the core. He makes his entrance by just randomly dirt biking his way out of the back of a truck, like the team just have him as their own personal big ass motherfucker. Deus is the group's walking fountain of knowledge. He provides information about the old world and key facts about the rats when they're needed. And he has one rockin' ass leather vest. Lucifer and Lilith are, I'm gonna say, the film's fan service. They're basically there to have sex with each other and show the audience their well-toned, sexy bodies. That'd be the bare bones of it. Though they do each have memorable lines and moments in the film. In the, in the cell, we found strange and wonderful things. Hey, what an incredible drink. And in a comical scene, they get stuck in their sleeping bag while they're trying to have a romp, and the rest of the group pay them out for their obviously sex-starved ways, which makes them less annoying than the usual brand of characters like this. Diana is the unfortunate soul that ends up getting infected. She's engulfed by rats and bitten all over. Her character arc is taking her fate into her own hands. She refuses to die slowly from her plague-ridden wounds, nor will she be eaten alive. She goes into the open and dies like a warrior, killing herself before the rats can. She refuses to give them the satisfaction. Noah is, I suppose, the hippie of the group. He discovers a lab in the cellar, a lab dedicated to bringing crops back to life and purifying water. But it's a false sense of hope, because he also discovers rats in the water, dooming him to be rat fodder. In an unnecessarily brutal scene, he's put out of his misery with a flamethrower. He doesn't have the worst death in the film, but it's certainly one of the worst ways to go out. The dude is literally covered with rats. They're biting the fucking shit out of him. Then he's given a healthy serving of fire to go on top of that. Doesn't end there. He's still alive. He shambles his way across the bar, jumps through a fucking window where he's officially finished off with more fire. On second thought, maybe it is the worst death in the film. Myrna is... Okay, she kinda sucks, but her suckage serves a purpose. She's basically the one that gets freaked out by freaky shit and panicking more than she probably has to. But she serves as a naive character, probably the youngest of the group. She's used as a pawn by Duke, this Civil War-looking bandito. He's a self-entitled creep that shows his true colors once shit starts getting real, thinking about his potential role as the new leader of the pack instead of survival. He easily manipulates Myrna with false promises of protecting her. And finally, Kurt, the leader, the fabulous man in charge, rockin' a neon orange ascot. It may be the post-apocalypse, but that doesn't mean you can't look awesome. Kurt is a flamethrower totin' fella with no patience for bullshit, and he cares dearly for the well-being of his friends. Oh, hold on! You fool, you were supposed to be guarding them! Stop it! Hey, tough love is better than no love. Conflict begins to rise within the group when the rats chew through the tires of their bikes. Apparently Taurus was in charge of looking after them, and Kurt, already distraught by the rat threat, loses his shit and decks Taurus right in the fucking beard. This brings out Duke's true colors. He uses an upset Kurt to try and establish the power he wants over the group. But Kurt calls his bluff, exposing him as the little worm that he truly is. Manipulating Myrna with the false promise of protection, Duke manages to lock Kurt, Deus, Video, and Taurus out of one of the safer rooms in the building, getting Taurus killed and getting everybody else fumingly pissed at Duke. All this bullshit results in a standoff. 
Duke commandeering an old military truck with some 50 caliber ammunition still left over. Running out of bullets, he resorts to holding Myrna hostage, but for once, the rats play in the group's favor, attacking Duke while he has a live grenade in his hand, causing him to take his own life. Unfortunately, Myrna is also killed in the process. Since we're on the subject of people dying horribly, people die really horribly in this film. Besides fire rats Noah and the exploding duo of Duke and Myrna, this film has some pretty fucking horrific body horror. When Lilith is just chilling in her sleeping bag, relaxing after getting her fuck on with Lucifer, a rat decides... A rat decides to join her. I feel like you probably get what I'm getting at here. If you're one of those people who don't enjoy hearing about severe genital mutilation in graphic detail, you might want to plug your ears right about now. The rat literally chews its way into Lilith through her vagina as she struggles to escape the sleeping bag, which earlier was established to have a faulty zipper. After the initial vaginal struction, it makes its way to her vital organs, killing her from the inside. Then this really disturbing ass shit happens. If rats freak you out to begin with, you're gonna fucking hate this. She's trying to speak! Okay, she, she's dead. Let's all take a moment to seriously give some True Blue Trooper credits to Lilith, played by Moan Duvivier, for putting up with this horror flick malarkey. And before you go all, only women experience terrible body horror, well, A, you've never seen a horror film, and B, Taurus gets an equally horrible death, if not worse. This poor manly son of a bitch gets engulfed in rats while they're in the cellar hoping to retrieve some water for plague-ridden Diana. And here's where it gets messed up. Taurus somehow makes his way back upstairs, revealing an utterly mangled face as he drops to the ground, this time dead for real. Or was he dead since the cellar? How fucked up is that? This implies that enough rats chewed their way inside him, somehow operating his body, strategically placing him upstairs. All so they could explode out of him. All in all, Rats Night of Terror is one hell of an impressively made film, and it's ridiculously entertaining. It has healthy doses of spooky atmosphere, cool characters, shocking moments, and unintentional hilarity. One of my favorite moments in the film is where they're carefully trying to avoid rats on the cellar steps, and Kurt flat out just starts expositing about all the dangers that a single rat can bring. Think of the diseases they can give you. Hepatitis. Meningitis. Leptospirosis. Plague. They just get a serious chuckle out of it. Scene not scary enough? Okay, let's flat out tell the audience why this is a terrible situation to be in. That'll get them. Rats, Night of Terror, makes learning both fun and fucking terrifying. Rats also potentially has one of the greatest endings I've ever seen. I know this sort of shit is subjective, but few times have I really gone holy fucking shit at an ending. Old boy, that shit was pretty crazy. Fight Club? Yeah, I'll admit, it gave me whiplash when I was like 14. But rats. Rats. Dude, what the fuck? Bit of context before we jump into it. Aside from chocolate and video, everybody's horrifically dead. Kurt and Deus get seriously messed up. The weight of like a billion rats, a door, and Lilith's corpse just crush the crap out of them. A head comes off, it's nasty, it's straight ghoulish. The end seems to be near. Chocolate almost resorts to killing herself. She refuses to go out the way Kurt and Deus just did, but suddenly there's a mist. A cloud of green gas that's killing off the rats, making them retreat. 
Figures in hazmat suits and gas masks emerge from the sewers. Mankind is rising back up to the surface to reclaim the Earth. Chocolate and video are taken outside by the mysterious and seemingly heroic figures from an advanced underground society. But are they friend or foe? You are our friends. And we are the same race. Once, someone told me they read in a book that we all lived on the earth together. That we were all brothers. The book was called the Bible, and it said that God created men and animals. <laughs> Some of you probably thought that looked hilariously spastic. Me personally? I tell you with the most honest sincerity that I consider this to be both one of the greatest mindfuck endings of all time, and absolutely freaky as all shit. Claudio Fergasso is to thank for this. He also worked on Women's Prison Massacre with Bruno, and he's to thank for Emmanuel staying in fucking prison at the end. He's also responsible for the incredibly chilling ending to Zombie 3. I don't want to spoil it in passing. I'm saving it for when I actually cover Zombie 3 in all its glory. Claudio is just a master of genuinely scary and or just plain absolute downer endings. Claudio Fergasso wrote Troll 2. Most people know this as an incredibly goofy film, and it is, right up until the fucking end. Rats and Women's Prison Massacre are no exception. I already talked about this in my review of Women's Prison Massacre, but if this is your first time with my show, I owe it to you to mention it here too. Credit where credit's due. Fergasso's the man. And so is our main man, Bruno Matai. He liked to go with a pseudonym in some of his films. For Rats, he chose to go with old Vincent Don. It's said that he slapped that one on his action and horror titles. He also went with Jordan B. Matthews, Stefan Oblowski, and Bob Hunter. The actors that play Chocolate and Taurus are also in two of Matai's more recognizable pictures. Taurus, played by Alex McBride, is one of the big-ass motherfuckers in RoboWar, and Chocolate, played by Goretta Goretta, is the leader of the Megaforce in Terminator 2. Wait a second, a woman can't lead the fucking Megaforce! The Megaforce are an elite squad of gay soldiers. Uh, oh yeah, maybe her character was a lesbian. Makes sense to me. An interview with Bruno Matai claims that the rats in the film are actually guinea pigs painted to look like rats. Not sure if I'd buy that, to be honest, but it's interesting. The scene where Noah is lit on fire and stumbles across the room was inspired by the towering inferno. Thanks to that film, Bruno realized that you could put out and reignite the flames and do the scene in strategic jump cuts to make it look like the character is burning for a lot longer. And that about sums up rats. In closing, I'd like to leave you with these words of advice. Enjoy this world while you still can. Because it won't be long until it belongs to you no longer. <laughs> <laughs>